After getting back from a trip, I found myself staring at an empty fridge. Too tired to plan meals and shop, so I thought why not let AI do it for me? I started by asking for a meal plan for the week that included a shopping list, recipes and serving sizes. I only wanted evening meals to keep it simple. I told chat GPT exactly what proteins I wanted and requested a couple of meatless meals to keep things interesting. I wanted to try to get chat GTP to use similar ingredients so we'd have minimal food waste, but I also wanted to have different flavor profiles so we didn't get stuck eating things that tasted the same throughout the week. With all this specified, here is the meal plan that was provided. I'm excited to see how this goes. I went through the shopping list, checked off what we already had, and then it was off to the store to get the rest of the ingredients. Okay, now the setup is done, let's get into the meals. Day one is Greek chicken souvlaki with tzatziki and Greek salad. Here's the recipe and ingredients list. It doesn't look too hard. I'm a bit shocked at the minimal seasoning, just lemon and oregano. Instead of separate chicken pieces for the week, I picked up a rotisserie chicken and I'll use that in the chicken dishes this week. We're doing this to make things easy, so why not add in some extra shortcuts here and there when we can. So first up, I need to marinate the chicken in lemon juice, olive oil, garlic, and oregano. I mix up the ingredients, added in some rotisserie chicken, and moved on to making the tzatziki. I don't barely ever cook Greek food, so this wouldn't be something I'd think to prepare. Have you tried making Greek food at home? Do you have a go-to recipe? Let me know. Gotta share with my kitchen supervisor. Just cutting up the cucumber now. Again, this is simple to do. It seems like a pretty pared down version of the recipe. One thing I did notice was when the ingredients were divided, like the cucumber being used in both the tzatziki and the salad, the recipe didn't state how much to use in each part of the dish. I just used my best guess. More chopping, the cucumber and the salad ingredients. These bowls were too small. I had to switch it out to a bigger bowl. Once the chicken was marinated, I just threw it into the air fryer. Since it was already cooked, it just really needed to heat it up. Okay, so here's the finished dish for day one. Overall, this is fairly easy to make, tastes nice and fresh, and isn't something I would usually make. Not a bad start to the week. I'd rate this one a solid three and a half out of five stars. Good, but probably not something I'd rush to make again. Okay, on to day two, teriyaki chicken with steamed broccoli and rice. I got a couple of shortcuts on this recipe to make it even easier, so this one should be a quick one to put together. First up, let's make the rice. Measure it out, wash it, put it in the water, set it, and wait for it to cook. Rather than making my own teriyaki sauce, I already have this sauce in the pantry, and it's good. So I may as well use this to marinate the chicken. Of course, my kitchen supervisor is requesting his cut of the meal. A little chicken for his troubles. I've got one bowl of white meat chicken and one bowl of dark meat chicken. set that aside and let's get to the next step. I'm going to use the instant pot to steam the broccoli so I figured I'd put some gyoza in too since I have some in the freezer. There's no timing on the broccoli so I'll just steam it with the gyoza. Easy fix. The rice is done so I'm going to start by putting that out in a bowl. Since the chicken is already cooked, this won't take too long to stir fry. Looks like everything steamed up nicely. I'll put that out too. I'm going to throw together a quick gyoza sauce for a little extra flavor. Here it is, day two. This looks delicious. I can't wait to tuck in. My husband really liked this meal. It was very easy to put together. I enjoyed it too, and I'll make this again. This one's getting a strong four and a half out of five stars. Quick, tasty, and definitely a repeat. I especially like this with the addition of the gyoza and the gyoza sauce. Okay, on to day three. Spinach and ricotta stuffed shells. This recipe calls for jumbo pasta shells. I've never used these before, so I'm not sure how this is gonna go, but let's get into it. So the recipe says to cook the shells according to the package instructions. So I'm gonna put them in the Instant Pot. That's how I usually cook pasta. While that's cooking, let's make the filling. I put the ingredients into a bowl, mixed it up, easy enough. 
I just use the full package of the ricotta and spinach so I don't have leftover ingredients. I added the marinara into the baking dish, have my filling ready to go, just waiting on the pasta. Okay, it's done. Let's get it out of the Instant Pot. Hmm, so now I have to stuff the shells with the mixture. This was difficult to do. The pasta was all wet and slippery and also really hot still. I had to be so careful with the shells because they were very fragile. Like I said, I've never worked with these before and I'm thinking now that this is going to be my first and last time. Eventually I was able to get them all stuffed. Okay, here it is, day three done. This pasta dish was very tasty. I like the combination of flavors. This is another dish I wouldn't think to make. I won't be playing with those giant pasta shells again, but I would like to make this as a lasagna or pasta roll-up type dish instead. So I'm gonna give this a four and a half out of five stars. We're halfway through the week and so far the AI has been doing a pretty decent job. Let's see if it keeps up. Day four, we have the baked cod with roasted vegetables. Looks like this one is just kind of a sheet pan recipe. So this one should come together quickly as well. Let's get to chopping. I have carrots, zucchini and bell peppers. Of course, my kitchen supervisor needs his share. Carrots are one of his favorite snacks. Most of this recipe is chopping up vegetables. I ended up with a lot of veggies and needed two pans to fit them all. I did put some pepper and garlic salt on the veggies for a little extra flavor. I have this beer battered cod from Costco. The directions say to bake this at 475 for 15 to 18 minutes. So I think I'll go in between the recipe and the package directions and go for 450 for a little longer to make sure the fish gets pro properly cooked. 20 minutes later. Fish and veggies all look good. Let's serve it. I was surprised at how good this dish was. This one is definitely going to my regular meal planning. The combination of veggies was delicious. Super quick, super easy, super tasty. Five out of five stars. Day five is a chickpea and spinach curry. Let's start off with making the rice. We usually keep a few different types of rice on hand, so I'm gonna make basmati rice this time since we're having curry. I'm not trying to make things harder than they need to be, and I already have this paneer makani curry in, so I'm going to make that tonight. It's so good and just takes a couple minutes in the microwave. I also have some garlic naan bread in the freezer, so I'll warm this up too. It's so good. I have to cut it in half so it fits in the air fryer, then I'll just toast it for a minute or so on each side at 400. Rice is cooked, so let's place it up. Rice, curry, and naan bread. Well, I didn't cook the recipe provided, this did give me the idea and inspiration to make this meal tonight. I'm not sure I can really score this as an AI meal, but we do have this maybe once a week and it's a 5 out of 5 stars. Day 6, our penultimate recipe, tuna salad with Greek dressing. I wasn't able to find a specific Greek dressing, but I did find this Mediterranean dressing which I'll use in this recipe. This is another recipe with mostly chopping prep, so let's get it all cut up. Of course, the kitchen supervisor needs his cucumber tax. So we're just taking all these chopped veggies, adding some tuna and dressing and mixing it up. Here it is, day six meal. This one was not to my taste at all. I wasn't able to finish it. Maybe someone else might like the flavor profile, but it was not for me. I'm going to have to give this one a one out of five stars. No surprises, I won't be making this one again. Okay, on to our last dish of the week. Beef tacos with pico de gallo and guacamole. Here's the ingredients. Let's get into it. To make this easier, I'll be putting the ingredients for the pico in the food processor. I added the onions, cilantro, and lime juice in first and then processed. I then added in the tomatoes so they didn't get chopped up too finely. There weren't any jalapenos in this recipe, but otherwise this looks like a somewhat solid pico de gallo recipe. Next up is making the guacamole. 
All we're doing to this is mashing up an avocado with lime juice, which isn't really a guacamole in my books, but I do like the addition of avocado into tacos. Let's cook up the ground beef. The taco seasoning package says to brown the meat up first, then add in the seasoning mix and water, so that's what I'll do. I took a little out before seasoning it for my little kitchen friend. Beef is cooked. Winston gets his share. Okay. Just beef, pico, and avocado seemed a little slim pickings for a taco, so I added in a few extra things that we had in the fridge, like shredded cheese, lettuce, and Greek yogurt. Okay, here's the finished dish. These were pretty good. I mean, tacos are good, especially with the few extra toppings. I'll go four out of five stars on this one. So here are my final thoughts on having AI create my meal plan for the week. Overall, I'd say I enjoyed this week. For the most part, everything was pretty easy to prepare. We tried some new dishes, got a couple of new recipes to add to my regular meal planning. This is also a really great option for when I was tired, but really needed to get some meals figured out and groceries in. You could even just order groceries online to make this even more low effort. I liked being able to tweak the meal plan a little bit to add in extra shortcuts, like getting the rotisserie chicken. I wouldn't do this every week, but I would do this once in a while to mix things up or when I was extra low on energy. In the end, letting AI plan my meals was a fun experiment and surprisingly practical. Definitely worth trying, especially on those low energy weeks. So what do you think? Would you let AI take over your kitchen for a week? Drop a comment below if you try it or if you already have, and I'll see you next time.